Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. The main talking point for many people, I think, continues to be the lack of rain. So will that be changing as we head through the next two weeks? I'll start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 10th. At the outset, there's some showery rain in the northwest of the UK, but southern and central regions are mostly dry. It's worth looking down to the southwest though, because there's a little feature here which runs northeastwards in the short term, and it brings a period of rain probably to parts of Wales and central England, maybe southern counties too. Although I think in parts of the south, the southeast, the amounts of rain are likely to be quite small. What happens in the following days is high pressure starts to build back from the south, so weather fronts continue to affect the north, but southern and central regions are mostly dry. Through the weekend, on this animation, there are some showers developing in southern Britain. I think the GFS could be overdoing the extent of them. It does have a tendency uh, to do that, so I would expect a good deal of dry quite warm and sunny conditions in most of the UK. But as we head into next week, things do change. Look to the southwest, uh, disturbances start approaching and they bring the potential, according to this model run, of heavy rain to southern and central regions. Very, very uncertain though about just how this will develop. I'll come back to it in a moment. Temperatures. On this update, it's worth looking at the bigger picture, particularly across Western Europe, because there's some very warm conditions beginning to build across Portugal, Spain, France. And although it's rather cool to begin with in, in, in much of the UK, we've got this rain on Wednesday, so maximums 14s, 15s in southern and central regions, this heat is not far away. Going forward to Friday the 13th, temperatures still over 30 Celsius in parts of Spain and France, starting to turn a bit warmer in southern and central Britain. Then through the weekend, it's still very, very warm down here, and some of that warmth is starting to move into uh, Britain with temperatures reaching maybe 21, 22 or even 23 Celsius perhaps on Saturday. Even by Monday, when there's there's that potential for rain to be pushing up from the southwest, it still remains very warm or even hot over Spain and France. Therefore, I, I think it does really just highlight there's quite a lot of uncertainty about how temperatures will be uh, progressing across the UK through this period. We're never very far away from that, uh, from those high values, at least southern Britain isn't. The MoGreps chart also highlights some of the uncertainty. In the short term, uh, temperatures in London dip a little bit, they then pick up. So there's good consistency here out to about the 13th of May. The 14th of May, temperatures then reach maybe low 20s in the London area. Beyond that though, the spread really does start to increase. By Sunday, value is going up to around 24 Celsius at the top end of the ensemble, with at the bottom end, maximum is only around 15 quite a wide divergence there between the individual runs. It just serves to highlight the uh, growing uncertainty about how things will be shaping up towards the end of week one. So in terms of rainfall, the aggregate charts for days 0 to 5 from the ECM on the left and the GFS on the right are consistent. The wettest conditions in the northwest, but even in much of central Britain, totals of between 5 and 30 millimetres are being forecast. That rain is mostly associated with the disturbance, which pushes northeastwards during Wednesday. And note that it stays much, much drier in the southeastern corner. Looking at the charts for the 0 to 10 days period, the values in the southeastern corner have increased. They're now greater than 10 millimetres on both of these forecasts. But at this range, there is a good deal of uncertainty. It really depends on how those disturbances moving up from the southwest, from the south, start to impact things. Are the deterministic models painting a consistent picture 
at the end of week one. Here's the GFS on Tuesday the 17th. High pressure is centered to the northeast, low pressure to the west, the southwest. The Canadian model, very similar at this point. Likewise, the German icon. The European ECM, though, has low pressure already beginning to exert more influence. And finally, the opposite is true with the UK Met Office Global. Low pressure is further west and high pressure is remaining dominant at this point. So the big picture between them is very, very similar. But the details are varying considerably with those being the main factor determining the weather which we actually experience in the UK because it's the balance between high pressure to the east, to the northeast, and low pressure areas to the west, the southwest, which will really decide whether we stay dry and warm through this period or become more changeable with an increasing risk of showers or longer spells of rain. With the forecast details becoming quite uncertain by the end of week one, what can be said about the prospects for week two? Well, as ever, it's all about trends and probabilities, not specifics. And I'll start with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Across the top, air mass temperatures, and there is a clear signal here for them to be well above the average, which is shown by the thick black line. Even though runs at the lower end of the ensemble, the cooler ones, they are tending to be close to or even slightly above that thick black line. And at the top end, there's some very warm or potentially hot ones in the mix. Rainfall along the bottom, an ongoing risk, according to this data, spikes continuing to appear through the second week. One or two of them are very big, and those could be indicating thundery conditions. They are in a small minority, though. Going up to Glasgow to see the picture from the northwest, the air mass profile is quite similar. The positive deviation perhaps slightly smaller than on the London one. Rainfall from more spikes showing up, suggesting a greater risk of rain throughout. A wetter picture as you head northwestwards. I'll come back to rain amounts though in a moment. Looking at the two meter temperature forecasts, the data table here is for London. The columns are mostly made up of this orange shading through the first couple of days at least. Those are runs going for between 21 and 25 Celsius. The amount of that particular color shading of orange decreases a little bit going forwards. Some of the low, uh, lighter oranges start to increase. Those are runs going for between 16 and 20 Celsius. The contrast there is not very clear. Hopefully you, you can see them though. Suggesting the possibility of it turning a little bit cooler at times. Nonetheless, throughout the second week, there are also a number of the runs in the red bucket, 26 to 30 Celsius. It suggests as I say, the possibility of it being very warm or even hot on some days. The view for Glasgow, mostly the light orange, 16 to 20 Celsius. The amount of yellows there increases, those of the 11s to 15s, pointing towards perhaps a greater Atlantic influence later on in the period, cooler conditions there in the northwest. The mean surface level pressure data table for York perhaps offers some evidence for that idea of more of an Atlantic influence later. The yellows are dominant early on, those are runs forecasting between 1011 to 1025 millibars. The amount of greens that it starts to grow there, the green and the columns. Those are individual runs going for between 996 to 1,010 millibars, perhaps a slight downwards trend through the week, although it's not very clear cut. 
And there are still a significant number of runs there, which are darker orange, higher pressure, 1,026 to 1,040 millibars. I said I would come back to rainfall. Here's the data table for London. I think it makes things a little bit clearer in terms of the amounts which can be expected as, as opposed to the, the line graph with the, with the spikes where those are indica indicative of rainfall, but it's not always that clear how many of the in individual runs are suggesting it. What these columns show is the individual runs and the forecasts from them. Through the second week, there's a good deal of light grey showing up there. Those are runs going for completely dry conditions in the given time slot. It's a six hour period. There's also quite a lot of dark grey. That's light rain really, 0.1 to 1 millimetres. It's the orange, uh, the purples, the blues, the greens, etc., which are showing the greater amounts. And there are some runs throughout the second week, which are fallen into those categories, but they do remain a relatively small number. Therefore, if this data is correct, the amount of rain in, rain in southern England will probably not be great through the second week, unless, of course, one of those thundery outbreaks hits, and most of the runs are not suggesting that will be the case, just one or two are going for that scenario. Up to the northwest, Glasgow again, and there are more runs forecasting greater amounts of rain. It doesn't look particularly wet, it doesn't look exceptionally wet, though still quite a lot of dark grey and light grey there. But certainly compared to the southeast, the data is pointing towards there being a greater risk of significant rain. I thought it would be worth just taking a look at the comparable data table as well for Plymouth, because it's the time of year when people are starting to think about holidays, and many of you tend to head down towards the southwest of the UK, Cornwall and Devon. It looks like there is a greater risk of rain there than in the southeast. So the data table here is more comparable to one for Glasgow than the one for London, with the Atlantic influence there having more impact on locations in Western Britain, Southwestern Britain and the Northwest than it is in central and eastern counties. The GEFS mean pressure plot for Friday the 20th of May suggests that high pressure may be centred to the south, the southeast of the UK, an Atlantic influence possibly making its presence felt. But the balance there is very much up for grabs. And the uncertainty there is also present in the ECM chart for the same time. High pressure possibly to the east over continental Europe. Finally, I thought I would show the GEFS postage stamps for Thursday the 19th of May. Each of the frames shows the forecast pressure pattern from one of the runs in the ensemble. There's a real mishmash of solutions on offer. Quite a few of them continue to have high pressure dominating, but a good number of them, on the other hand, are going for a more changeable or unsettled pattern with showers or longer spells of rain affecting much of the UK. Very uncertain. So, to summarise the next two weeks, week one, it starts mixed. A period of rain pushes north eastwards over southern and central Britain but amounts in the southeastern corner are likely to be very small. It then becomes settled over most of the UK, but there is a chance of some rain in Scotland. Temperatures often close to or above the average, warm at times. By the end of the week, the uncertainty increases. There is a chance of showery spells of rain beginning to push up from the south or the southwest. Week two, there could be some very warm or even hot spells in southern and central regions, but generally a more changeable theme is expected to become established, especially in the west and the north. With all that 
hot air in the mix. There is a chance of thundery conditions, but most of the computer models at the present time don't really support them becoming widespread. So there we have it. I started off by discussing the lack of rain in parts of the UK. Well, it looks like there will be some in the southern part of Britain during the next couple of weeks, but a good deal of uncertainty, in my view at least, about the amounts. Also, there's a chance of it turning very warm or hot on some days. Not a given though either. It's just something to keep an eye on. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful and enjoyed it. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.